This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hi everyone, Ta here. So it's been ages since I last made one of these and now that I've fully set up my Galaxy S24 Ultra exactly the way I like it, I thought this would be the perfect time. Let's start with the lock screen. A lot of people ask me in my review how I managed to get the weather to show beside the date. Well, the toggle is kind of hidden, so I don't blame people for missing it. You know on the screen where you select the clock style? If you scroll to the very, very bottom, the toggle is actually right down here. They should probably just move it to the top to be honest. I've been loving the lock screen widgets. Just having all this extra information available at a glance is super handy. The widgets have also made me actually want to use the always on display. Normally, I just disable it. At the bottom, instead of my personal information, it might sound corny to some, but I like to have a motivational quote of some sort just as a constant pick me up. Short ones will work the best, but if if you want to use something longer, you totally can. It'll just scroll sideways like a news ticker, which I will say looks kind of cool and adds a bit of suspense when you're reading it. Moving on to the home screen, I have the new at a glance widget from Google. At first, I hated the redesign, but yeah, it's grown on me. There's three different styles, transparent all the way for me. The other two just look out of place. It can display a bunch of stuff including upcoming calendar events and the occasional severe weather alerts are pretty clutch too. I also like Google's weather layout over Samsung's, so using this over one of Samsung's own weather widgets is a no-brainer for me. Below that is a widget that I've been using for years now. This is called the month calendar widget. It's free to use, but I believe there's a three or four dollar one-time purchase for the pro version, which gets rid of all ads and unlocks a ton of different themes. When I think of interactive widgets, this is exactly what I mean. I love that I can scroll through the different months. Tapping here opens a full year view. Tapping on individual days lets you view and add events in this very slick overlay instead of jumping into your calendar app. If you're a visual person like me, you'll also appreciate the ability to add emojis right onto the calendar widget itself so you can quickly see when something important is coming up. But yeah, I have yet to find a calendar widget that offers this level of functionality and also looks this good. Below that is just three rows of apps. I'll come back to my favorite and most used apps once I finish showing you the rest of my home screen. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that I have a very subtle animation going on. This is done through the Wonderland app from Good Luck. Basically, download the app and give it a whirl yourself. You can go as crazy as you want, but I like it a little more low key. I'm not trying to make my phone more stimulating than it already is. You can have snow falling or even emojis flying across your screen. It's honestly wild what they let you do. You know what else is wild? The fact that everyone deserves digital privacy. Unfortunately, that's not the default these days. Thanks to today's video sponsor, Surfshark, whether I'm on my laptop, tablet, or phone, I can hide my IP address plus location, stopping websites, apps, and trackers from spying on me. This lets me browse the web without worrying about leaving behind identifiable traces. I can also change my virtual location as easily as that. This opens up access to more entertainment, information, and sometimes even lower prices. And get this, it supports unlimited devices. So just one subscription covers every single gadget in your house. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, there's really no reason to not try Surfshark. Click the link below and use my promo code TAO. You'll get an extra three months free. On the second page, I kind of just pieced together a bunch of widgets. This is all done with One UI, no extra launcher or third-party apps or anything like that. I typically like to stick with Samsung widgets because I like how flexible they are. You can resize the majority of them to whatever shape you want, and they give you the option to adjust background transparency, which is not something you get with the majority of widgets. Okay, so the daily activity, steps, and sleep widget are all from Samsung Health, and great if you own a Galaxy Watch. The battery widget is also nice if you own multiple Samsung products. Looks like they threw a bit of a teaser for the Galaxy Ring teaser in here as well. If you didn't know, you can also stack widgets. It's a great way to declutter your home screen, but still have access to widgets you occasionally use from time to time. I've got the Galaxy Buds widget tucked behind the battery one since I'm not always wearing earbuds. I've also got a Bixby Routine widget stacked behind the sleep tracking one. This one opens my downloads folder. This one changes my screen timeout to 10 minutes. This one turns on and off my mobile hotspot when I need to tether to my laptop while working at a coffee shop. Scan is just a quicker way for me to scan receipts or documents and have them uploaded straight to Google Drive. And a lock 
keeps my phone unlocked. And finally, at the very bottom is the Samsung calendar list view widget, just so that I can see what's coming up in my calendar in a little more detail. This one is actually pretty good too. You can quickly add events by hitting this plus symbol and it also supports emojis, which is a nice visual touch. Rounding out the home screen setup are the edge panels. I'm only using a couple to keep it simple. When you have too many, it's just way too tedious swiping through all of them to get to the one you wanna use. I've got the calculator panel and the clipboard panel. I use both all the time, and I like that they're accessible from anywhere, not just on the home screen. Pro tip with the clipboard is that you can actually drag and drop items from it. For example, you can drag and drop text from the clipboard directly into emails. It also works with text messages too. Customization with GoodLock is a big part of the Samsung experience. If you're new to Samsung, definitely give it a download and see all the cool customizations you can do with it. I could probably do a whole video on that alone, but I'll just run through a few of my favorites right now. One Hand Operation Plus is easily my most used GoodLock feature. It basically lets you map the navigational gestures to either side. It makes using this massive phone so much more manageable and ergonomic for my thumb because I don't have to reach all the way to the bottom of the phone. You can add all sorts of crazy functions to the gestures, but I like to keep it simple. This is the layout that I've been using for years now. This next one is a fun way to make your messages feel more personal. In the Edge Lightning Plus app, you can set up custom animations for notifications based on keywords. So for example, I have it set up so when my mom messages me, this animation pops up on the screen. And when my husband messages me, this animation pops up on the screen. What's nice is that the animation also shows up on the always on display too. So it's a quick fun way for me to know if a notification is from my mom or husband with just a glance from across the room. So we all know Apple made a big deal about the action buttons on the iPhone. Well, with the Registar app, you can have a very similar functionality except on the power button. So by default, you only have two options for what happens when you press and hold the power button. Enabling this toggle in the Registar app opens up a whole bunch more. You can even emulate the iPhone's iconic mute switch functionality if you wanted to. Press and hold to enable sounds. Press and hold again to put it on vibrate, aka mute. Google Assistant or the flashlight is probably the most useful choices in my opinion, but you can totally have it launch any app you want. All right, let's talk about apps. I'm not gonna go through every single app on my phone because Ain't nobody got time for that. So I'll just throw a quick list up with the main ones. But yeah, I mostly use a combination of Samsung and Google apps. I will admit, I do rely a lot on Google services. I hate being so reliant on one company, but because I regularly switch between Macs, Windows, iPhone, and Androids, it's the only real reliable way for me to have everything available no matter what I'm using. I do want to mention a couple of cool apps that you might not know about. All right, so Wavelet is an app that makes your wireless headphones sound better. It's free and it's super easy to use. Just enable legacy mode, toggle on auto EQ and search for your headphone model. There's tons of presets for all types of headphones. It honestly made my Pixel Buds Pro sound so much better. Definitely worth checking out if you don't like how your headphones sound out of the box. Every time I play this game in a review, I get asked what game it is. It's called Wreckfest, and it's one of the few console quality games on the Google Play Store. It does cost 10 bucks, but I think it's worth it. It plays great with touch controls, but I usually just slap on a USB-C controller like this one from GameStar for a more comfortable experience. So gaming is cool and all, but don't sleep on how awesome reading is. As someone who rediscovered their love for reading over the past few years, I cannot recommend the Libby app enough. It basically allows you to borrow books from your local library. I mean, wait time can be long for popular books, but it's a great way to read a variety of books without actually having to pay for them. Anyways, I've rambled long enough. The video is getting pretty long, so I'll wrap it up here. Let me know what you think of my setup and if you learned anything new from the video. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, I'm out of here.